Thank you, Lord. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. Jesus, I'll never forget for me. Jesus, I'll never forget set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget no man. How can I forget? How can I forget? How can I forget how you brought me out? How can I forget? No, man. How can I forget? How can I forget how you set me free? How can I forget? How can I forget? No, never. How can I forget what you've done for me? Everybody, please stand. How can I forget how you brought me out? How can I forget? No, never. How can I forget? For me, how can I forget how you set me free? How can I forget how you brought me out? How can I forget? No, Jesus, I'll never forget. Let's never forget. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. How can I forget what you've done for me? How can I forget how you set me free? How can I forget how you brought me out? How can I forget? No, never. How can I forget? Hallelujah! How can I forget how you set me free? How can I forget how you brought me out? How can I forget no man? Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Never forget what you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll never forget. Hallelujah. We should never forget what Jesus has brought us from and through. Hallelujah. Give him the praise. He's worthy. Yes, he's worthy. Hallelujah. That's the one thing we should get excited about. Hallelujah is Jesus. Not no stadium, not no clothes, not no money, not no job, not no family, not no self, but Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Everybody, please stand. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Go before the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. We want to say thank you, Lord God. Yes. 
Thank we you, cannot Lord. forget, Lord God, what you've done for us, Lord God. Hallelujah. And how you're continuing to just dig around us, Lord God. You're continuously teaching us, taking us to different levels, Lord God. Because, hallelujah, you don't forget about your people. So we say thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for being our God, Lord God. Being our Savior, Lord God, our Redeemer, our King, Lord God. Oh, hallelujah, to be... King's kids, Lord God, is a wonderful privilege, Lord God, and it's an honor. So we say thank you on this day, Lord God. Bless this service, Lord God. Oh, Lord, help us to contain our words and our, our mouths and just shut up, Lord God. Just stay out of the way, Lord God. Have your way. Teach us just, just obey you, Lord God. Just wait attentively on what you got for us as directions, Lord God. We say thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for this service, Lord God, for the many people that you prepared their hearts to be here today, Lord God. We say thank you, Lord God, for the souls that are already going to get saved and baptized in your name, that are going to get your Holy Ghost, Lord God. We say thank you already, Lord God, because we're just going to stay out your way and let you work, Lord God. We say thank you for everybody that's here to work for you, Lord God, that we may be able to usher in your presence and do your will. And we ask these many blessings on this day in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen, amen. While you're still standing, please turn to James chapter 1, verse 19. The book of James chapter 1, verse 19. Everybody there? Word of God reads, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on, let's praise God this morning. Amen, saints?
hallelujah. Come on and shout hallelujah. Come on and shout hallelujah. He has done great things. And I'm glad. And yes, I'm glad. Hallelujah. He's done wonderful things. And I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. I am glad. I am glad. I am glad. I am. Hallelujah. 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 Told y'all, hallelujah means this is it. This is it. I ain't going nowhere else. And I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. He ain't done nothing extra for me. I'm just glad I'm saved. I'm glad. 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 And when I get through being glad, I'm glad. I wish I, I wish I wish I man, I wish I could really explain how wonderful it feels to have the Holy Ghost. And to be baptized in Jesus' name. And to be knowing that I'm saved. To know that everything that I hear out of my own mouth, I know is right. I know it's making me closer to God. I know, I know, I know, I know. Here you go, Brother Beverly. Listen, hallelujah. I'm glad. Come on, it's offering time. It's offering time. It's offering time. Come on. Stand to your feet. Get your envelopes ready. Stand to your feet. I think this is the month or the day that you give uh, the pastoral offering. Sister Sabrina got the, the, the baskets. Amen. Hallelujah. The choir going to sing us a song for offering. After that, they can have a seat. Amen. I feel like preaching today. I feel good. I'm glad. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm saved. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody standing. Follow the directions of the ushers and the officers. I'm glad. Amen. I ain't got no sad moments. Amen. Got, listen, listen, listen. Y'all should have got some faith. Don't worry about nothing. Nothing. Don't worry about nothing. 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 Ain't nobody in here important. Stop making yourself so important. That's right. Amen. I can call you a dog That's right. if I want to. I can call you an idiot. I can call you a fool. Because you think you important. Don't tell me how I can talk to you. Y'all get off that kick. Ain't none of us worth a dime to nobody but Jesus. And Jesus is the only one going to treat us right. Do y'all get that? Ain't nobody that's going to treat you right. Wait a minute. Two people going to treat you right. You and Jesus, I hope. Now, if you can't treat yourself right, you're in trouble. Come on, everybody standing. Everybody standing. Everybody, everybody. On your feet. Amen. Follow directions of the ushers. Amen. All right, choir ushers, y'all got it. We come to glorify his name. We come to glorify his name.
Come to glorify his name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Slow to speak. Slow to speak. Thank you, Lord. Proverbs chapter 18. While they, everybody getting situated and taking their seats. and I want everybody in church. I don't want nobody sitting in another room. If you, if you can't sit in the sanctuary, go home. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We've come too far, y'all, to allow stuff that just keep interfering with how, how we live. It's, I, I've been passing 20 years almost. I'm, I'm tired of foolishness. I'm tired of it because y'all won't listen. It's funny how y'all are listening to everybody but who's telling you the truth. You listen to everybody but who's telling you the truth. Amen. Amen. I, I, I'm, I don't think I force nobody to be a member of this church. I told everybody, I will show up at your front door. I will call you. I will help you. But when you tell me straight up to my faith, I don't want to be bothered with you. I'm sick of you. I'm through with you. That's the only time I walk away from you. Amen. So when you, when you tell me that, then I'm through with you. Amen. Because you said you don't want to be bothered. As long as you don't say that, I put up with you. I put up with you. But when you give me them kind of statement, I'm through with you. Now you between you and God. You can say and feel however you want. Amen. Amen. That's the way I am. Right. We were talking this morning about uh, opinions and how I was raised. Amen. I was raised that when a person tell you straightforward in your faith, they don't want to be bothering, they sick of you, I'm boogity boogity. I'm gone. Amen. Amen. You can say I'm getting on your nerves. I won't leave you alone. I hang in there with you because I know I ain't doing, especially since I've been doing right by God. I know I ain't doing, I know you just got your moments. Praise the Lord. We all have moments. Amen. Amen. But when you tell me you're sick of me, you don't want to hear nothing I got to say, get out your face. I leave my wife, she said that. I write her, write her divorcement. And I got the Bible to stand behind. When a person don't want you, Bible said, let them go. When a person, because that's the way God is. God said, when you don't want me here, let you go. Amen. And I ain't coming back to get you. You got to come back. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Proverbs chapter 18. 18. Y'all got it? Verse, verse 21. I got everybody. Nobody in the bathroom. Nobody in the kitchen, in the conference room. Go check, lady. Get them. Amen. Everybody should have been and went to the bathroom. All oh, everybody should have been and combed their hair and did everything they need to do. Uh, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. Read. What does it say? Death and life are in the power. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. 
How you live, how you die, where you go is in your mouth. Come on, read it again. Death and life is what? It's in the power of the tongue. It's in the power of your mouth. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, read what else he said. And they that love it, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. The message today, what kind of fruit are you eating? What kind of fruit are you eating? You got the fruit of life and you got the fruit of death. Which one are you eating? What kind of fruit are you eating? Why is your hand up? He want a Bible. Y'all please get him a Bible. He like raising his hand. Get him a Bible. His hand's always up. Amen. <laughs> you ever notice that? <laughs> That's all right, Austin. We got all kinds of saints in the church, so don't, don't feel bad. <laughs> Sometimes I say certain things in hand, go, he ain't got no answer. Poor Nina be telling put your hand down. And he be saying something to her, and she just look at him, shake her head. That's all right, Augie. You're my buddy, man. Come on. Come on, verse 21 again say what? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat. What kind of fruit are you eating? Are you eating fruit that's going to kill you? Are you eating fruit that's going to help you live? What kind of fruit are you eating? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I told y'all this morning, slow. Slow. All y'all that miss Sunday school, slow meaning dull. If you are dull, or, uh, and dull mean lacking interest. If you are lacking interest on what folks are saying, why are you talking about it? Why are you commenting? Or if you are lacking excitement, if somebody is talking about something that doesn't excite you, why are you holding a conversation about it? If stuff don't excite me, I don't talk about it. I don't talk about it because I don't, I don't want to talk about it. I don't, I don't engage in nothing that doesn't excite me. It doesn't excite me to watch sports. That's why I don't watch it. That's what excite me. So when you talk about it, I can't talk about it. Amen. I don't worry about since I got saved. If it ain't helping me live holy, I'm not interested in it. Amen. I'm not interested. You understand? The only reason I go to the beach with the young people because they have fun. This beach means nothing to me. But because they have fun, I have fun. So to me, it's light because they're young people. They need the excitement to do something. So I get excited and watch them excited so they can keep living holy for Christ. Amen. But it means nothing to me. But because I like them being happy because I want them at church, that's what makes it exciting to me. Amen. Because I know if I hang with them and do things with them, they're going to trust me as a pastor and I can help them get to heaven. So that's old Holly. That's where the excitement comes in at. Amen. 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 But let you grown folks say you're going to the beach. I won't go. <laughs> oh, pastor, we having a something. Ain't nothing grown folks. I won't be there. Because I ain't interested in that. Y'all already grown. I, I can't help you. Amen. If you ain't got it by this time, hey, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Do y'all understand? It has to excite. I have to see light in it. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So what am I saying? If we're going to be talking about slow to speak this month, we got to decide what fruit. What fruit are you eating? Because death and life is in the tongue. You just read that. You want to know how to live right or you want to know how to live bad? It's going to come out your mouth. Amen. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 13. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What fruit are you eating? What fruit are you eating? What's good to you? Being evil, is that good? Is that, is, is that the kind of fruit you like to eat? Who in here eat fruit they don't like? Jeremiah don't like bananas. He don't, he don't like them. He said something about the texture of something. I love bananas. Boy, I, I love bananas. But that's okay. He ain't going to eat something he don't like. 
What fruit are you eating? Are you eating evil stuff and you claim you don't like it? I beg the difference. If you're eating it, if you're talking it, if it's coming out your mouth, it's because you like it. So don't sit up here and tell me you're doing something you don't like. Well, I don't like doing it, but I'm going to do it. Well, eat that banana. Since you don't like it, let me see you eat it. I can't, I bet you I would have to tie him down hog time to get him to eat a banana. Because he does not like it. You understand? But y'all claim y'all don't like running your mouth, then why you keep eating the fruit of it? Why you keep doing it? Now, I can go a whole lot of ways, but the subject is much in controlling your mouth, slow to speak. Amen. So why are you keep talking about something? Number one, you say you don't like it. Number two, you ain't excited about it. Number three, it, it, you're not interested in it. Number four, it's it not helping you get light. Then why you keep? Because the Bible said you keep doing it because you like it. So the question remains, what fruit are you eating? You eating fruit you don't like? I don't, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Not if you don't have the Holy Ghost, I believe it. But if you got the Holy Ghost, I don't believe that. You keep doing what you're doing because you like what you're doing. Amen. Hallelujah. They, see, and y'all like to say, well, pastor, I don't like it. No, you don't like the outcome of it. You don't like the outcome of it. Because it gets you in trouble. But you like doing it. That's why you're walking around. Yeah, I straighten them out. But then straightening them out got you in trouble. Now what you're saying? I wish I hadn't have done it. Why did you do it? Because you like being evil. You get a kick out of it. Come on. Uh, uh, chapter 13, verse 3, he said what? Come on, y'all read. Come on, man, read. Verse 3 said what? He that shut up. Come on. I'm not going to go soft with this. Keeping your mouth controlled. He that keepeth his mouth, he that shut up, does what? Keep his what? Listen, you shut up, man. You can live good. What keep getting us in trouble is our mouth, y'all. Because we keep wanting to say things we feel we got the right to say. You ain't got the right to say nothing if you want to live. If you want to not, if you want to die, that's the fruit. Keep eating it. I don't know, I don't know at what point that, that, that Jeremiah stopped liking bananas. I ain't, I'm, I'm just using that because that's what came to mind. I don't know what point, but he didn't keep eating them after he didn't like them. When he realized he didn't like them, he stopped eating them, didn't he? Yeah. Listen, so my thing is, do you still like something that you say you don't like? Then if you don't like it, why you keep doing it? If you don't like it, why do you keep doing it? Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, from the top. Verse 3. Read it again. He said what? He that keepeth his life. I'm sorry, read it again. But he, he that keepeth his mouth, keepeth his life. But he that open. You're going to get in trouble every time. You're going to get in trouble every time. Do Now, that goes back to last month when I said, what are you hearing? When you hear that now, when you hear God tell you that, what do you hear? I hear, shut up, John, you have a good life. Now, that's what I hear. Now, do y'all hear what I hear? Or is it ain't facsimile or close to it? Or do y'all hear, well, I ain't got to shut up all the time. What do y'all hear? Because now I know what I hear. I hear if I learn to control my mouth, Misha, I can live a pretty good life. That's what I hear. That's what I hear. Now, I can't tell y'all what y'all hear. That's why the question remained from last Sunday, I believe it was, what are you hearing? What are you hearing? Are you going to go out and take this and let somebody tell you something different that you got the right to your opinion? You got the right to say what you think? You got the right to voice how you feel? I didn't hear that. I hear, shut up and you can live a pretty good life. That's my vernacular. Do I want to say something? Yes, but I heard if I shut up, I can do all right. Amen. So that means my feeling carries no weight on where I go to hell or heaven. Y'all don't like that part. My feeling got nothing to do with my salvation. How I obeyed them words that God wrote, that's. So my thing is, what kind of fruit are you eating? I'm going to eat this up. See, I'm going to eat this up. I'm going to eat this. I'm going to eat this all month. I'm going to eat it because I got to shut up. I got to shut up. I got to shut up. And if I shut up, then what? I'm going to have a good life. But if I keep opening my mouth wide, 
open your mouth wide here, meaning you always got something to say. You always got to voice how you feel. You always got to state your opinion. You always got to get your point across. You always got to make it known that I'm not a dummy. You always got to say something. That's opening your mouth wide. You got a lot of mouth all the time. That's what that means. You got a lot of mouth all the time. So all of y'all that's got a lot of mouth all the time, you see why your life is jacked up, ain't it? You see why people can get on your nerves fast. Because you got a lot of mouth all the time. Listen, ain't nobody going to come and talk about you if you, uh, if you don't say much. They come and talk about you, you don't say nothing. You're going to say, okay. Guess what? They ain't going to talk to you very much. So now you don't get to hear what they say because you control your mouth. You shut up, made them shut up. You talk, make them talk. Because they already feel the way they feel, and you feel the way you feel. So now y'all in an argument because nobody won't close their mouth. When the Bible said a soft answer turn it away wrath, that means if I be quiet, that means if I'm dull of hearing, I'm not excited about what you're saying, I'm going to make you shut up. Now you don't get upset because what you're talking about don't mean nothing to me. So I'm going to be slow to speak. I'm going to be dull because what you're talking about is not interesting to me, nor is it exciting, and nor is it helping me because God done told me life and death are in the tongue. So therefore, listen, you can run your mouth and die, but I'm going to eat the good fruit. I'm going to be quiet. Oh. I'm going to eat, be quiet, and I'm going to eat the good fruit. I'm going to live. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's go to Matthew chapter 12. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Feel good. Y'all feel good? Amen. Feel good. We're going to learn to be slow to speak before this month is over. We're going to learn to keep our mouth closed. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew chapter 12. Let's go to verse 33. What's the title of the message today? What fruit are you eating? Come on, say that. What fruit am I eating? Ask yourself, what fruit am I eating? What you eating? What are you, eat? what are you eating? You don't like bananas? Why you keep eating them? Now, did I stop buying bananas for the house because Jeremiah don't like them? No, I like them. They said, they said right there on the table... And if my, my wife see them getting kind of uh, uh, brown or black or whatever, what my wife does, she freeze them. And I throw them in smoothie. But I'm going to eat them bananas. So when they go to getting a little brown, my wife chop the ends off, put them in a bag, throw them in the freezer. So when I make a smoothie, I go in there and grab two of them. Then I stop buying bananas because Jeremiah didn't like them. I'm sorry you don't like them. They're great in potassium. You go to getting a little older, you need certain vitamins. Get it in the fruit. So I'm going to get my potassium. Now, I'm sorry you don't want it, but I want it. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew chapter 12, verse 33. Read. What does it say? <coughs> come on, come on. That, 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 too many people here for me to hear that small volume. Come on. Verse 33. Read. What does it say? Make the tree good and his fruit good or else and his fruit for the tree is now I told you last week people when they when he say perverse he's saying you're corrupt in the word of God so either you're going to be corrupt and be corrupt or you're going to be good or do good choose one make a decision what fruit are you eating choose life or death make a decision Listen, you don't have to come to church to choose death. Don't come to church to choose death. You're going to choose death, leave the church, leave Jesus, leave the saint, leave me alone. If you're going to choose death, stay out of my face. Because I am not going to argue with you because I don't like no light. I'm dull. I'm slow. Y'all understand? Understand? I'm slow because I'm not interested in your foolishness. I'm not interested in all of the stuff you got to say because you choose to keep offering me a banana. I don't like bananas, daddy. Don't keep offering me something I don't like. I'm not going to eat it. I'm not going to eat it. 
Oh, hallelujah. Don't offer me something because I'm not going to eat it. So you don't have to come to church to go to hell. You can do everything else but come to church. And I guarantee you, you will be a perfect candidate for hell. Perfect. Ignore the church. Ignore God. Ignore the word. I guarantee you, you will become a perfect candidate for hell. But if you want heaven, then come to church. Listen to the word. Take it home and use it, and you will be a perfect candidate for heaven. But, oh, don't you? Listen, I want to be a perfect candidate for heaven. So I'm going to come to church. I need potassium. I don't want no peel. I don't want no man-made fiber to get me potassium. I want it right out of the source, which is a banana. Other things, God, I'm just using banana as a, as a, so banana got it. So why don't I go right? I'm a perfect candidate to get some potassium because it's right there in the banana. And if I eat eight or nine, I'm a weak man. I'm a perfect candidate. Listen, hallelujah. If I come to church and I want heaven, I'm going to Bible class. I'm going to Sunday school. I'm going to pray. I'm going to listen to the word. I'm going to use And I'm a perfect candidate for heaven because I'm eating the right fruit to make sure I get what I want. What am I saying? Do y'all want heaven? What fruit are you eating? Why are you trying to get somewhere eating that? You, listen, you ain't going to get no heaven eating hell food. You can't get it. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, 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 they, got, they got all of these drinks and stuff out there, protein drinks and all of this stuff for everything. For, for male dysfunction and lose weight. And, and you know, the only way to lose weight, right, is stop putting the weight in you. But you're going to get it burnt out, sucked out, fried out. Just stop putting it in. All of these side effects for trying to do something, put the cookies down. Put the fat down. Put the saturated fat down. Put it down, but you want to get, you want to stop becoming something. Well, stop eating in it. Y'all want to live holy, but you want to live like the devil. How in the world are you going to live holy and you keep acting evil? Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But we don't want to do nothing right. Let's do it the way God tells us. Why is that so hard? Well, I can't put it down where well, you're going to be overweight. Amen. You're going to be, come on, come on. Talk, and all this got to do with what kind of fruit are you eating? What are you eating? Like somebody said, well, I don't eat that much. Five, four, weighing 320 pounds. And they want me to believe they don't eat that much. <laughs> well, where in the world are they getting that fat from? And then folk, that's why when folk go to tell me, and I just get quiet. And I go, hmm. Because obviously I'm an idiot. So I'm going to be an idiot for you to make me think all of that's water. All of that's water. Seriously. Well, I tell you what, if all that water, let's fast for seven days. Let's see how much of it you lose. You fast for seven days with nothing, with no water, and all you lose is a pound and a half. But you told me that was water. Amen? Amen. So I'm slow to speak because I'm not interested in your lie. That's darkness. In other words, what are you saying, Pastor? Listen, I'm slow to speak because when you get in my face and lie, I'm slow to speak because there's no light in what you're talking about. And I sure ain't interested in it because you're just lying. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Did we get there? Chapter 12, verse 33. Verse 34 said what? Old generation. Old generation of liars, old generation of snakes, old generation of two-faced and two-time and backstabbing, low down. That's what a viper is. A viper is something that'll sneak up on you from the back and it'll cut you down or bite you or stab you. The whole purpose of a viper is to kill you. They serve no other purpose. Oh, hallelujah. So God said, y'all are a generation of viper. All you want to do is die, and you want me to believe that you don't want to die when all your fruit, all I see is evil. How are you going to convince me you're not evil, and every time you come around, there's a bunch of mess and confusion going on? 
But you want me to believe you what? When all you got to do is be quiet? When all you got to do is die out? When all you got to do is be born again? When all you got to do is shut up? Because the Bible done told me if I shut up, I live. And I have a good life. So y'all see, when y'all come to me and y'all blaming everybody else, I know the problem ain't them. The problem is you. The problem is you. But you don't want to believe that. You still think it's them. What did I tell you about an opinion this morning? <laughs> I'm going to say it because it needs to go on record. The world needs to know how I feel about your opinion. Your opinion is like a butthole. Am I worried about your butthole? But then I ain't worried about your opinion. So say what you want and I'm going to shut up. And therefore, what you said don't mean nothing to me. So therefore, am I upset? But you got a raggedy opinion. Mean nothing to me. I don't care. Everybody got opinion about my analogy. Why I keep saying it? Because I don't care. But I bet you understand how I feel about your opinion, don't you? And you'll never forget how I feel about your opinion. So guess what? You're going to shut up with your opinions. Because you know it doesn't do nothing for me. It does something for you. So you can voice your opinion. Go ahead, please. Get it off your chest. And I'm going to ignore it. Because it don't mean nothing to me. What am I saying, y'all? Listen, it's us that jacks us up. It's not the people. It's not nothing but me that makes me. And the evidence, the evidence that it's me is because I keep running my mouth. Because I got to get my opinion. I got to get my point. I got to get my idea. Don't care about your ideas. <laughs> what, what, the, what, the, what the, my, my parents said, my mom anyway, Maybe a few uncles. He said, when I want your opinion, I ask for it. <laughs> Amen, lights. In other words, when I'm concerned about how you think, I ask you to tell me how you think. But if I don't ask you, I mean, I don't care how you think. And God said, like this, God said, who advice did I ask? God said, did I ask anybody for advice on what to do? God said, I ain't asked y'all nothing. Because it doesn't, I don't want, y'all opinion don't mean nothing to me. God said, if I wanted some food, would I even ask you? God said something else. I love him. Come on, come on, watch this. Making a point here. What fruit are you eating? What fruit are you eating? Come on, read verse 35. Did we read all of that? 34? No. He said, well, old generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, wait a minute, stop there. How can y'all, being evil, say something good? Really? 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 Now, if I know you evil and you say bad stuff, why is that a problem? That's what I expect you to do. What do I expect out of sinners? To act like a sinner, don't I? That's very clear. Do I ever expect anybody to act anything different? Do I ever expect a sinner to act different? Tim ain't got the Holy Ghost. I don't expect him to act like a saint at no point in time. He worked hard at being nice. Don't matter to me. He can't do it for so long. He gonna quit. Because he ain't got the power to do it. Does that upset it? Probably so. Do I care? No. Come on, say no. Because he can't do it. If he could do it without the Holy Ghost, there was no need for the Holy Ghost to come. He needs the Holy Ghost. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Watch this. What do I expect out of saints? They act like a sinner. But you got the Holy Ghost. Why do I expect you to act like a sinner? Because I know you can't do it all the time. You're learning and you're practicing. And when you mess up, I got to give you mercy and grace because I mess up and I want the same mercy and grace. So when all of us act a fool, it's no big deal to me because all of us going to act a fool at some point in time. Why? Because we don't know how to shut our mouths. Amen. So y'all think I'm making Tim feel bad. I'm making you feel bad too. Amen. I equated you to him. So you mad about that? Because it don't matter, does it? Because my opinion don't mean nothing. You see that? So you just shut up and say, well, that's just pastor talking. 
Look at there, look at there. So there's no fight, is it? No fight nowhere. Because everybody just agreed we all got problems. And so we, but guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to pray for him and I'm going to pray for you. And the Lord knows I'm going to pray for me. Amen. Because I want to get better just like I want you to get better. Like, so I'm going to pray for all of us that we get better. Why? Because we all have problems. And the whole idea is, the whole solution is, shut my mouth. So when you mess up, when you mess up, I can't say nothing because when I mess up, did I tell y'all? I didn't tell y'all, did I? So I ain't going to tell you when he messed up. I ain't going to tell you when he messed up. So I'm going to be slow to speak because it's not interested in me knowing what, what, listen, it's not interested in me knowing what you did when I already know what you're going to do. The word done told me, hallelujah, the only reason you still here is because you ain't got it right yet. The only reason I'm still here, I ain't got it right yet. So I'm going to go down, I'm going to go put him down. I'm going to go talk about him. I'm going to ridicule him. Why? Because of what? Then I'm, why don't I tell everybody what I'm doing if I'm telling you what he's doing? Why don't I do that? Slow to speak. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. He said you're a generation of vipers. And that's what I'm explaining. Listen, vipers don't do nothing but bad stuff. Are you a generation of viper? Or are you a viper? Question come again. What are you eating? You know snakes, I, I should have looked it up, but it didn't come to mind. Snakes have to eat certain food to keep their poison strong. They don't eat regular food to keep their poison strong. It's something that they eat. I'm going to look it up. I have it for you next week. It's something they eat to keep that poison strong. Listen, hallelujah. You have to eat something. You have to eat certain things to be low down all the time. You have to eat certain things to run your mouth all the time. You got to eat certain things to maintain that viper mentality. Why are you maintaining a viper in mentality? Why are you hanging around confusion? Why are you hanging around folk that are angry? Why are you hanging around stuff that's getting in your mind and getting in your spirit and getting in your heart? Why you want to hang around darkness and expect to produce light. You got to eat a certain thing to stay evil, y'all. Come on, read. With the, uh, verse 34 from the top. Old generation of viper, how can ye, being evil, speak good things, for out of the abundance of the heart, that what come out of your mouth that come out because you full of it. Amen. You full of it. Stop filling up on evil and it can't come out your mouth. Fill up on good. Fill up on, listen, how you setting up, listen, you setting around worrying about how people think about you because you're setting around feeding on what people said to you. They shouldn't have said, I don't care what you say to me. I don't care what you say. Doesn't matter to me. I'm going to just like, Lord bless them. They have no idea what they're saying. Listen, that's what I'm going to say. Because I know you don't know what you're doing. You've allowed something to get in your mind and make you think this way. Come on. Next verse said what? A good man. A good man. A good man. A good man. Out of the treasures of his heart. A good man. A good man. A good man. A man that can't be nice all the time, he's an evil man. He can say whatever he wants. Because if you weren't evil, it wouldn't come out your mouth. It come out your mouth because you're evil and you're no good. You busy telling somebody else how bad they are. When they grow, what you think you are? Go stand in the mirror and tell yourself how bad you are. Come on, cut yourself down. Talk about yourself. How many times you going to do it? Stand in the mirror and talk about how bad you are and watch how you feel like an idiot to yourself. Well, that's the way you look when you cut somebody else down. You look like an idiot to them. But because you said your opinion and you got it out of your mouth, you think you look good. No, you don't. Because you just showed somebody you're a viper. Blessed quietness. You just show somebody you're a viper and you okay with that. You okay showing somebody how low down you are? Cause you got it out of here. Yeah, get me disrespect me. You don't know who I, listen, I know you don't know nothing. <laughs> and then the person that you're doing it to feel bad because they think they are important. Now both y'all look like idiots and don't know it. But I'm standing on the outside. That's why I tell y'all, there's 
your opinion, that's opinion, and then there's the truth. I want to hit the person on the outside. I want to hit there because they looking at both of y'all. They looking at both of y'all. But the person over here, they ain't thinking. All they, all they got is what they see. See, you thinking, Beverly, and talking. So you doing a lot of, your thought is coming out your mouth, which is stupid, but you don't know that. And then the other person can, you're saying a lot of thoughts in your head, which is stupid, but you don't know it. And then you see two of them arguing together, which one's the fool? But the person on the outside see the foolishness in both of y'all. That's the truth. They can tell the truth of the whole situation. Y'all can't. Because you won't shut up. Because when you get to talking, I'm going to show you, and I don't know if it's going to be today, or, but for, your, 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 your emotions are doing the talking. And your emotions ain't nothing good about your emotions. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Come on. So what fruit are you eating? What are you eating? Are you eating evil fruit? You keep eating evil stuff. That's why it keeps coming out. Because out of the abundance of the heart, out of the abundance of the heart, out of the abundance of the heart, Whatever come out your mouth is coming from your heart because you full of it. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. What, what, what verse was that? 235. We didn't read it all. Read. What does it say? For a good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringing forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringing forth evil things. So y'all think y'all all right? Well, let me ask you this question. What kind of fruit are you eating? You might be all right. What kind of fruit are you eating? I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in very good health. And I thank Jesus for it. Because I'm going to eat right. I'm going to eat right. I done lost about 20 pounds. Amen. Somebody said, I don't see it. I don't really care. I know I ain't wearing a 40 waist now. I know I'm down to a 32. 33, 32. You can think what you want. Amen. Hallelujah. I can get in clothes I couldn't wear six months ago. Amen. And, and I ain't walking around in pain. You don't hear me crying about nothing. Amen. And I ain't got nothing cut out. I ain't took no byproducts. I just put some stuff down and started doing some exercise. And here I am. Everybody got their opinion. I don't really care. Amen. I, 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 I got to pull my belt almost three holes now to get them. So the belts are going. You know how your belt go too far? See that? My belt, you should stop right here. And you're going to tell me I ain't lost no weight. But I, what I'm saying, I started eating right to lose it right. I ain't eating wrong to lose weight. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to lose some weight. And then I'm going to eat that whole cake that, that Kayla took time. I gave, I gave two thirds of that cake to Papa David. Me and my wife still eating on that little piece we got. The cake is delicious. But I want to lose weight. I'm going I'm to put all this evil in me. Well, you ain't going to lose no weight, John. What am I saying? Y'all can't stop being evil eating like a pig. I ain't talking about food. I'm talking about evil. You can't stop being evil, eating evil like a pig. You want to stop being evil, don't entertain evil stuff. Get away from evil conversation. Get away from evil people. Get away from arguing. Get away from thinking you're important. Get away from folk. Listen, that you worry about how folk feel about you. Worry about how Jesus feel about you. Oh, hallelujah. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth don't speak. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Verse 36 says what? But I say unto you. Every idle word, that meaning idle. When you were sitting around shooting the breeze, it didn't mean nothing. God said, I'm going to judge you on the tray. So what kind of fruit are you eating? So yeah, you talked about Sam. God said, I'm going to judge you on it though. I don't care what you feel. I don't care how he received it. I'm the judge. I'm going to judge you how you received it. And I'm going to judge how you responded. Because you said something too. I done told you, don't worry when men mistreat you and say all evil matter against you for my name's sake. 
I done told you don't sweat that stuff, but you didn't listen to me. Neither one of you listened to me. And you want me to choose who's right? Me. Ain't nothing right about y'all. Neither one of you. So what you want me, whose side you want me to be on? I ain't on nobody's side because ain't neither one of you right. Because neither one of you listen to me. So what you want me to do? Choose a side based on your opinion? Based on how you felt? I don't really care about. I care about what you did. I don't care about how you felt. I told you people are going to mistreat you. I told you folks going to talk about you. And I also told you be careful what you say because if you offend one of my little ones, I'm going to get you for offending them. And then I told you to love your enemy. So tell me who's right. When all both of you have to do is shut your mouth. But you keep feeding evil. You keep eating the evil fruit. That's why I say a viper got to eat certain food. And that's what that viper know they have to eat that food to maintain their, their, their strength or their defense. Because as soon as I stop eating, let's just say it's blueberry. As soon as I don't eat blueberry, I can't defend myself. I can't defend myself. If I don't eat the, I don't know if it's blueberries. I'm going to look it up. If I don't eat the blueberries, I can't defend myself. Right? I hope y'all listening to me. If I don't go around and keep evil in me, I can't defend myself. That's why y'all go around getting evil to defend yourself. But I told you not to defend yourself. I told you, let me defend you. But you won't let me defend you. So you keep eating evil fruit that make you like a viper. But you think you need to carry a gun to defend yourself. And then when you carry a gun, you shoot somebody. Then you want me to side with the person. You want me to side with you because you shot somebody when I told you not to kill nobody? I told you to give a place on the route? I told you to resist not evil? I told you, listen, to take it in the chest and you want me to defend you because the person did you wrong and you shot them? When I told you don't eat the viper food? So why would I defend you? Both of you wrong, Tommy. Oh, hallelujah. All you got to do is learn to be dull about what people say, which is me, what you say lack interest to me. What you say is lacking excitement to me. What you say is no light in what you say. So why am I going to entertain your insults? Why am I going to entertain your mentality? Why am I going to entertain your opinion when it doesn't excite me? And you got the right to have one. And I have the right to ignore it. Am I making sense, y'all? The reason you open your mouth is because you think you're important. When I said, blessed out of poor in spirit. You ain't poor in spirit so you got a lot of mouth but you want me to side with you when you wrong just like the other person is wrong. But you want me to side with you. I'm going to side with right. Who kept talking? She did. Who kept, who shut up? Nobody. Both y'all going to hell then. I got a hell for people like to run their mouth and I got a hell for people that like to run their mouth. Because both y'all did what? Ran your mouth. I don't worry about the reason you ran your mouth. I want to know, did you run your mouth? I remember one time, a guy did something he had no business. I ain't going to go into the whole story. He did something he had no business. And he ran up on me, Vance, and he hit me. I didn't hit him back. We got the police there. You know what the police asked me? He said, he said, he said, uh, sir, did he hit you? And I go, yeah. He said, did you hit him back? I go, no, he said, turn around. He said, you go home. Sent me home. He didn't worry about if I was right or wrong. All he wanted to know, did we both hit each other? That's all he was concerned about. He didn't ask why. He didn't ask what was the reason. He didn't ask how hard. He said, did he hit you? And I said, yeah. He said, did you hit him? I go, no. He said, sir, turn around. Handcuff you. See you later, sir. Go home. Took you to jail. He don't even know what happened. All he know, you hit me and I didn't hit back. Now that's the police. That's the police. What do you think God going to say? 
What do you think God going to say? Now, if we both had went to jail, now we got to prove who's innocent. Because he going to say self-defense. I'm going to say self-defense. But watch this, y'all. Listen, listen, listen. When I didn't hit back, the police knew who was in the right. It's obvious who's in the right. It's evidence who's in the right. Because I didn't hit back. So that told me I had to be the one in the right. What am I saying? When y'all keep your mouth closed, God know you in the right. When you keep running your mouth, he know you in the wrong. Because you did what I said. Slow to speak. Shut up. It's evidence. It's evidence. It's evidence in your character. Who sit around and get beat up and in the wrong? Who do that? Oh, hallelujah. Come on. Come on. I hope y'all get this, man. I told y'all this is going to be a good month. I'm going to love this month. Because at the end, we're going to go read the final scripture. Y'all can go read it. It says, when a man can control his mouth, he ceases from sin. Ain't that something? The more you control your mouth, the more you get to the point where you don't sin. Your mouth, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. If you stop speaking something, listen, that means you're not feeling it because it's no longer in you. But as long as you voicing it, uh, Josiah, is that Josiah? Be quiet, boy. Listen, the more, the more you don't feed it, the more you don't feed it, don't eat. Watch how you die. Slow down, man. You be hungry the whole time you die. And you can't even say, I'm dying. All you can say is, I'm hungry, but you're dying. You don't say, I'm dying, you say, I'm hungry. Stop feeding yourself that evil. Hallelujah. And all you're going to say, man, I'm getting better. I'm getting better. Because when you stop feeding evil, you live better. And that's what the scripture said. The more you tend to life, you looking out the life. When you learn to control your mouth, everything's get better. Listen, you get to the point, folks say stuff, you go, huh? They say, what? Oh, I didn't even pay that no attention. How you not hear that? Because it didn't excite me. It had no light. And I wasn't interested. When y'all ain't interested in something, don't y'all ignore it? God is good, man. You can't do that. Well, y'all ain't interested in something. Don't you ignore it. Why can't you ignore what people say? Because you're interested. You're interested in how they feel about you. And when they say stuff that you don't like about how they feel about you, it bothers you because you are there to impress people. If I ain't here to impress you, why would I care about how you feel about me? The reason it bothers you, because you want to, you, listen, you out to please man. I ain't out to please none of you rascals. I'm out to please God. Y'all think about this now. What, man, the Bible said it. Slow to speak. I'm telling you what slow mean. Slow mean you dull. Dull meaning you lack interest on a particular subject. Whatever you find interest in. You're going to talk about it. You're going to comment. You're going to have something to say. But if there's no interest in it. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. What verse? But verse 36. Come on. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in it. Now, remember, I told y'all Wednesday. Was it Wednesday? I said, if you come up for judgment... That means you're going to hell. Now I'm going to show you a scripture before the month is over. That Bible said we're being judged already. So I'm not going to be in that judgment. So what are you saying, John? He said we're going to be judged on idle word, right? But if you come up for judgment, then you know why you're, being, you know why you're there. You never got it right. But why don't you be judged on every idle word now? This is how you do that. Shut your mouth. Because now what you're doing, you're judging yourself on every idle word you say. That's why I'm not going to say it because I know it's my emotion talking. So I'm going to control my idle word. So therefore, I don't have to be judged later. So by me shutting up, watch this. I cease from sin. I cease the idle words. I cease the bad word. I cease all the word because I've learned to be slow to speak. 
I learned to go, okay, John, that ain't worth saying. Idle word, so I didn't say it. So I didn't have to be judged on something because I'm being judged now, and I got it. So I ain't going to say it. Therefore, there's no idle words coming out of my mouth. Because I got it. You got it, Trey? I got it. I don't have to say it. But I can't get there if I don't start now. Come on. Look at the last verse here. I got a lot. Like Paul said, I got a lot to say to y'all this month. I'm excited. That's why I need a lot of Bible class. Now, I won't be here next Sunday. That's why I'm having a meeting. Because I need y'all to get right. So, listen, everybody that's a director... Sidebar, everybody that's a director, don't you run off. Because when I finish with the brothers, I want everybody that's a director, I want everybody that's got a position in this church, I want you in the sanctuary. So when I come out of there, after I get through wringing their neck in a nice way, I'm going to come over here and wring the rest of y'all neck in a nice way. Amen? No, I ain't fussing. Y'all got to understand. We'll get into it. But I don't want you, if you in any auxiliary, director, you doing anything in this church, I want you to stay here. Amen. And yes, we have service at 3.30. Yes, we have night service. So it's a busy day. I done told y'all to stop using Sunday to take care of your personal stuff. This is God's day. Amen. Amen. Now, let's go back. Verse 37 said what? For by thy word thou shalt be justified, and by thy word... Now, wait a minute. Now, if that ain't a... Boy, if that ain't a doggone good statement. By your words, I'm going to determine what I do to you. Ain't that something? By what you say. Now, since I'm going to be judged on what I say, I might want to be slow to speak, huh? I might want to control what I say. But you wrong. Okay, you are wrong. But your wrong don't determine if I go to hell or heaven. My wrong. So I got to ask myself a question. Am I going to say something? Because if I say something, I'm going to be judged on what I say. Beverly, I ain't going to be judged on what you said. And you talked about me like a dog. God said, that's got no bearing on your salvation, John. What you say to him has got bearing on your salvation. So what you going to say? Are you going to say something back? Because like, you know you got a lot of viper in you. You got a lot of evil in you. Are you ready to start controlling it today or are you going to wait till next year? Because you remember now, you're surviving on evil. So if you wait till next year, if you got 20%, you're going to have 40% next year. So if you can't control 20%, you sure can control 40%. So what you going to do? Are you going to walk out the sanctuary today and keep eating the berries? Or are you going to walk out the sanctuary today and eat bananas? What you going to do? Bananas is good fruit. Berries is the evil fruit. Which one are you going to eat? So the question remains, what fruit are you eating? Because I told you folks going to mistreat you, so I don't know why you're surprised. I told you folks going to speak all manner of evil against you falsely, so I don't know why you're surprised. I told you give plays on the rap, resist not evil, give plays on the rap, so I don't know why you're surprised. I told you no weapon formed. That means the weapon going to cut you. The weapon going to hit you. The weapon going to bruise you, but the weapon won't win. So I don't know why you're surprised. I told you all that little godless shall suffer persecution. So I don't know why you're surprised. I told you all things work together for the good. So who, who told you all of the stuff was going to be good? I told you all things is for your good. So I don't know why you're surprised, John. But this is what I told you to do. We'll get to that at the end. I ain't going because I get ahead of myself. Come on. We're going good time. I'm glad we started early, Lord. Come on. Uh, uh, did we read 37? Yeah. Now remember, put 37 in your head. Read it again. For by thy word thou shalt be justified. By thy word, thou shalt be justified. Now the Bible said, watch this. The Bible said, if the righteous scarcely make it, you know what's going to scarcely get you out of here? Your words. That's why he says scarcely. I'm going to judge on what you said. Oh, you didn't cuss for two times in five years? But them last five years, you cussed like a dog. Well, Isaiah chapter 50. 
Josiah, I'm going to have you come up here if you don't stop it, boy. You want to come sit with me? Chapter 50. Are y'all learning? Y'all listen to what I'm saying? This is, this is a great topic. By your word, you're going to be justified. God say, God say, let me put it to you. God say, the only way I'm going to find out if you're in the right by what I heard you say. The only way I'm going to say you're in the right is by what you say. Or the, what you didn't say. Because if you said something nice, you was right. You didn't hit the man, Mr. Portis? No. Well, you're right. You called the police because it's my job to hit him, not your job. But he was wrong. I know it, Mr. Portis, but you did what was right. By what you did made you justified and not going to jail. Go home, get in your own bed. God say, I'm going to base on what you say on where I send you. Now, why would you keep doing evil? You know that's a way to get to hell. Why would you keep doing that? The scripture said it. John Portis didn't say it. The scripture said it. Come on, chapter 50. We're going to do one verse. We're going to do more later on down the road. Verse 4 said what? Listen, 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 listen. Listen. What make people say a lot of things and do a lot of things because they're irritated, irritable, dissatisfied with their life? Bible sums it up, they weary. You know what makes people weary? Sin. Sin makes people tired. Sin wears you down. Because sin makes you wonder what's going to happen next because you are, watch this, y'all ready for this? Because of your unbelief. Because of your unbelief, you get tired. Because you get tired, you get weary. You get weary, you act a jig fool. Why don't you have faith? Have faith and you won't have an attitude. Get some faith in God. Why are you tired of not having money? If you got faith in God, you ain't tired, are you? Why? Because you got money. Do you see it? No, nope, but I got it. As long as you think you ain't got no money, it's going to wear you down. And I'm going to hit you next. As long as you, as long as you think you ain't got no money, oh, what am I going to do? It wears you down, don't it, Candy? Because you wonder how you going to meet them bills. So when your daughter come and ask you for a daughter, a dollar, and you struggling trying to find 20, how you going to respond to her? Say it. Say it in the mic. How you going to respond to her? Say it in the mic. With an attitude. Yeah. But it's your fault that you weary because of your unbelief. Give her the dollar. That dollar ain't going to make or break you. But because you weary and then an hour later, oh, I could have gave her a dollar. Oh, y'all don't get what I'm saying. Because you're weary. So God said, let me tell you how to deal with this. Believe me. Trust me. The sin go. When the sin go, slow to speak. Again, what fruit are you eating? I ain't picking on you because we all been there. The reason I know that's true because I've been there. Asking me for money. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out, man, I got to pay this bill. And then him, and my wife or my boys or one of y'all come in. Pastor, you got a dollar? No, I ain't got no dollar. That's where y'all are when the bum come to you on the street. You driving, you barely putting gas in your car. You got $20 and that's all you got in the bank and you putting 10 in there to hold on and hand the bum. Uh, can you, can you spare some change? <laughs> what you, what you want to say? Get out of my face. Got no money, but you got it. How can I be so accurate? Cause I've done it. I know how it feels, but you gotta get to the you gotta get to the point where you trust in Jesus. If you trust in Jesus, you slow to speak, you go. Because right 
God, you know you got the money. You know 50 cent ain't gonna break you right now. You need $50,000. <laughs> 50 cent is far from, from stopping you getting $50,000. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. He said, I know how. I know how to speak the tongue of the learned to help folks that's weary. Listen, how, if we don't know how to control our mouth, slow to speak. What should be interest to you? That the fact somebody out here begging. That's what should be the interest. Not the fact he asked me for a dollar, but the fact that you don't know Jesus. So let me give you some words to help you to get closer to Jesus. But instead, I'm worried about my lack of faith. So I'm going to respond to you wrong because, watch this. Let me show you a flip side of no interest. So therefore, I ain't interested in your soul. So I'm going to respond in a sinful way now. Because I'm dull about your excitement. I'm dull about your interest. I'm dull about your darkness. And I shouldn't be. I should find joy. I should be interested in the fact that you begging so I can help you get out of it. I'm going to talk about that side of it later. Just throwing that in for you right now. Come on, go to the book of James. The book of James chapter 3. Oh, hallelujah. I love, I love, told I love being saved. Y'all going to love this month. With faith in this month, y'all, we, we ought to be raising folk from the dead. I know y'all don't know that yet, but we'll get there. Remember, after this year, we're going to do some work for Jesus. We're going to turn this world upside down. But y'all got to hang with me. And let me tell you something. God going to move everybody that's a thorn in our flesh. So when y'all see folk dropping off, just know God said, they can't help y'all do what I need y'all to do. So I'm going to move them. So don't you be one of them that get kicked to the curb. Because all I'm going to say, the devil have left the building. I don't care how you feel about it, because I can guarantee you, everybody that left this church, the church is doing better without them. And they can hear that, and I don't care how they receive it, and I really don't care. Because I know, I know, listen, I know what everybody go through when we got thorns in the flesh. I, I have to deal with everybody. And I know, I know how everybody feel when a weight is lifted. Now, he ain't going to lift all weights. Just get that. But he's going to live some of them heaven ones because he know we done struggled enough. If not that, he's going to say, John, you done struggled enough. I, I, I need you to go this way. Come on. Did, what did I tell you to go? James chapter 3, verse 5. Read. What did it say? Even so the tongue is a little member and boasted great thing. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindled. And the tongue is a, a, and the tongue is a, the tongue is a, the tongue is a, the tongue is a, the tongue is a fire. Now, the tongue is a fire, right? Let me, let me make sure you got that. So every one of y'all, every one of y'all that's got a tongue, y'all got a fire going on right now. If you got a tongue, there's a fire going on. Now, how are we going to put this fire out? What makes a fire burn worse than anything? What is it? Oxygen. Oxygen. Right? You want a fire to burn fast, give it some oxygen. You want a fire to, you want, you want your tongue to burn fast? Give it some oxygen. How do you give it oxygen? Opening your mouth and talking. <laughs> what, somebody said something else? It wasn't nothing. Listen, so I, 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 how do you give your tongue oxygen? But if you slow to speak, you can douse the, douse the fire, right? But every time you, and some of y'all open your mouth every time somebody say something. What's the next part after that? The tongue is a fire. What? 
Y'all got a world of iniquity. All of y'all that got to get your point across and always got to open your mouth and always got something to say, got opinion about everything, feel like you got the right. You see why you burning down forests. You see why you burning down relationships. You see why you burning down friendship. You see why you burning down your own life and you think nobody like you because you keep burning down your own life. That's why he said life and death is in the tongue. You dying because you killing everything that's good for you because you won't shut your mouth. World of fire. You burning down everything because you won't shut up. Shut up, douse the fire. Keep your mouth closed. Be slow to speak. Control it. I know we got a fire. I know there's a fire right here, but I'm going to keep it under control. It ain't going to get much oxygen. You give it too much oxygen, Sabrina. Stop giving it oxygen. Douse it. Then, we're going to talk about the little you do talk. We'll get to that later. Douse the fire. Come on. He didn't say the mouth. He said the tongue. Now, I've been told, I don't know how true it is, a person with a tongue can't talk. I don't know if that's 100%. Without a tongue. They can't talk? That's what I heard. That's what I heard. I don't know. But let's just say it's true for the sake of discussion. So if you ain't got no tongue, what you gonna do? To get your point across? I ain't got no tongue, and you say it's under me, I'm going to cuss you out. What did I just say? <laughs> so are you going to get mad? Because you don't know what I said. How come we can't do that with the tongue? Why don't we just don't say nothing, and you still don't know what I thought? I thought about hitting you in the throat, but you don't know it. <laughs> Douse the fire. Douse the fire. Come on, read from the top. What, what verse was that? Six. Five. Did we read six? Yeah, come on, read. And the tongue is, is see, I've heard for it's like a fire. That ain't what the scripture said. Distorted, perverse, misinterpretation. The, font, the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that defied the whole body and set it on fire the course of nature and it is set on fire in hell. Listen, your fire is burning so good, God sent you to hell to burn with the real fire. I'm going to send you, since you like fire, you like burning, grab them, cast them. Send fire with the fire. Send love with the love. Ain't no fire in heaven, y'all. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all like fire? <laughs> God said, I got a good place for you. Come on, next verse. Verse 7 said what? Every kind of beast and the birds, snakes, is tame. They done tame. They done tame anything that God have created, from elephants to lion to to python snake, snake that can eat your whole body. We got them all tame, but can't nobody seem to control that doggone tongue. Read what else he said. But the tongue can no man tame. It is unruly evil. God said y'all can't shut your mouths. Verse 9. Do I want that verse? No I don't. Not today. Come on. Colossians chapter 4. But the tongue can't no man tame. Now, I'm going to let you believe that for right now, but that ain't totally true because he go on to say something else. I don't want y'all to go into that yet because I need y'all to understand how bad this tongue is because we can do all things through Christ. Notice I said through Christ. 
Not through John, not through Nina, not through Elisa, not through Jane, not through Candace, not through Angela, not through Nunu. We can't do nothing to us. So y'all got this wrong. So don't say you can't do it. He just, he's explaining something, and we'll get to the further explanation later, but he's letting you know you don't want to do it because that's why the question keeps coming up. What fruit are you eating? What you get, folks, say, I can't lose weight. I can't lose weight. That ain't true. That ain't true. I would, listen, I, I know y'all get tired of hearing it, but it's a motivator. When I reach down to tie my shoe up and I came up red and hot and a headache and sweating, I realized I'm fat. So anybody here can't tie your shoe up with ease and comfort, you fat. Now, you don't want to admit that to yourself. You got to tie your shoe up like this. <laughs> or you ask somebody to tie your shoe up. <laughs> or, see, <laughs> the world, the world, the world is slick. See, some of y'all, some of y'all don't tie up the shoe. You wear flip-flops all the time. <laughs> you know why? Because you're tired of not being able to tie your shoe. You're hurt. It, it, listen, it's time for you to lose weight. Don't get mad at me. That's word spoken in due season. Then you know it's time. Listen, I've been there. I know how it feels. It, no, it don't feel good. Every time you go home, you can't wait to unbuckle your clothes and flop out. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. Colossians. I've been there. Thank you, Jesus. And see, here, here's the problem with church folk. They think the preacher ain't supposed to preach about obesity. Well, it's in, the office, it's in there. He said they're obese. They're slow belly. He talk about you being slugging and all. All of that stuff is in the Bible. So I ask you again, what do you hear? I'm supposed to preach about what? Y'all don't think obesity affects your mentality? It, it, it affects how often you come to church. It affects you getting on your knees to pray. It affects a whole lot of stuff. So don't tell me I ain't supposed to preach about it. Come on. Uh, Colossians chapter 4. Let's go to verse 6. Read, what does it say? Let your speech do what? With grace. My, what I say to grace means the teaching of the gospel. If I'm not preaching something that's incoherent or in line with the gospel, I shouldn't talk about it. So obesity is in line with the gospel. Because he talked about slow bellies. Amen? Amen? So don't think I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm showing you something here. What else he said? Season with. The reason I laugh with y'all because I've been there. That's letting you know. I'm not telling you something on what I heard. I'm telling you on something that I know. That's why Paul told Timothy, don't be no novice. Don't walk around preaching something that you can't back up. I know what it's like to be out of your mind. I know what it's like to be overweight. I know what it's like to not have friends. I know what it's like. I know what it's like. I know what it's like. Jesus said he was tempted in all points, yet without sin. That's why he's able to tell us, I know what y'all are going through, but all you got to do is have faith in God. All you got to do is trust in the Lord. All you got to do is trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to your own under. All you got to do is acknowledge me in all your way and I direct your path. All you got to do is seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all them things. I, all you got to do is have faith. Faith in God. Yes, sir. But if you don't know how to control your mouth, come on, season with salt that ye may know how to ought to answer. Listen, 
When you can control your mouth, you know how to use what you got. One more. Let's go. We're doing good. Let's go. Go, go back to. Let's do Psalm 39.1. We read that in Sunday school. Am I helping y'all? If, if, I mean, if you really get some help, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I mean, I showed y'all all the last two Sundays of last month. I showed you that you come to church just to be corrected on life. That's the whole reason we're here. To be corrected on life. To be reproved. Amen. We do a lot of stuff that don't make sense. Don't, that ain't right. We don't know what we're doing. We get confused. We all do. That, that, hey, we don't know. We don't know what we're doing. You know, it, it, it's, it's hard being a parent and you've never been a parent. You, you make so many mistakes. But you don't know it. Because, no, listen, you, and then most of us, 99 and three-fourths and a half percent of us in here, we didn't have good parents. And if we're honest, we will admit it. That's right. Amen. We didn't have good parents. We, we just didn't have it, y'all. We just didn't have it. And then we come along to be a better parent, and we go too far. Yes, Lord. Because nobody taught us. You know, nobody taught us. And we got all new different days and times and things. And listen, we don't, we, we would love to give our kids cell phone, tablet, but then y'all go and look at stuff you ain't got no business looking at. And we don't want you to go to school and be talked about like you so poor that you can't have one. Then we dealing with that because we don't want our kids to go to school and be talked about and bullied because we won't give them something that we can give them. But we don't give it to them because they ain't going to do right. And they think we take it because we don't like them. We taking it because you don't do right. And then when we explain that to you, you don't get it. And then you want us, you put us in a betwixt too because we don't know what we're doing. Listen, that's the same thing about being saved. We done come over here, got the Holy Ghost, want to do right, come to church. We don't know what we're doing, y'all. But God is going to help us. God is going to stay on us. God is going to teach us. But we got to do what he say. Otherwise, he's not going to give you what you want. Just like you don't give your kids what they want because you know they're not going to do right. So God said, I'm not going to give it to you, John, because you ain't going to do right. And then you don't get it. The reason I don't is because you don't listen and you don't want to listen. And then you think there's something wrong with me. God say nothing wrong with me. Just do what I tell you, man. And I give you the good pleasures of your heart. Come on, verse 39, chapter 39, the book of Psalms. Read the psalmist said, I said, I will take, I'm going to watch what I do. I'm going to take heed to my ways. Listen, saints. Listen, saints. Take heed to your ways. Look at what you're doing. Yes, Lord. Watch what fruit you're eating. What fruit are you eating? Look at what you're doing. Be slow to speak. Slow to speak. Think about it. Is this interesting to me? Is it valuable to me? Now watch this. Now watch this. If it's valuable to you, when someone says something to you, about you, or anything, then why won't you treat it like it's valuable? Take the advice, take the ridicule, take the whatever they give, and use it to your benefit if it's valuable. Amen. Because if they said something that you really wanted to comment on, you would treat it because it's valuable to you. So if it's valuable to you, then treat it as such. If it's not valuable to you, ignore it. If I offer you, if I came up to you, Misha, I'm going to give you a thousand dollars with your ugly self. What you going to do? You going to take that thousand dollars. <laughs> That ugly part you didn't even hear, did you? <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't hear that ugly part didn't even cross your mind. Why? Because it wasn't 
valuable. But the thousand dollars, oh, thank you. Thank you, John. Wait a minute, I called you ugly. Oh, you did? But thank you for the thousand dollars. I'm, I'm making it come, but tell me that ain't reality. You didn't hear that? So what am I saying? If somebody got something to say or do something, if it ain't valuable, dump it. But if it's valuable, say, so you know what? You know you're right. I'm sorry. Watch this. That's a soft answer, ain't it? And they turn it the way around. Because they meant it for evil, but God turned it for your good. Because they didn't know that God was dealing with you on something. And now you say, you know what? You ain't going to say it to them. You go, God, you funny. You funny. You walk away convicted in your spirit because God used an evil person to correct you. Now watch this. Let me help all of y'all out. God said, I'm only going to use evil people to correct your evil because a good person can correct your evil because a good person don't have that kind of fruit. A good person don't know how to cuss you out, Nikki. So why would I use a good person to cuss you out? They don't know how to do that. So I'm going to use an evil person to cuss you out because that's what you need to hear because out of the treasures of my heart, I can't give you curse word because it ain't in me. So God ain't going to put something in me to correct you when he got a whole lot of evil folks out there he can use but he said watch this if I use you to correct the saint I'm going to get you for your evil that you had I use you since that's what you wanted to do you got a hell of fire going on in your mouth so why don't I use it because it's going to make her better so if it's valuable to you if it's valuable to you then respond because ain't nothing, anytime something is valuable to you, you treat it with respect because it's valuable to you. But if it ain't valuable, then don't respond to it because it means nothing to you. So the man said, I'm going to take heed to my way that I sin not with my do y'all get what, he, what David is saying? I'm going to pay attention to what I do and what I respond to that I don't say something ain't got no business saying because it's going to make me wrong if I say it. So I ain't going to say nothing because my way. So if Beverly tell me something bad about me, my way should automatically let me know, am I really like that? And if I am, what am I going to say? But you're right. If I'm not, I don't care. So, I'm going to pay attention to my ways. Come on, I'm almost finished. I know y'all getting antsy. I will keep my mouth with a... I'm going to keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is sitting there saying something to me. You know what? Listen to me on this, y'all. And, and you can get offended if you want to. Anybody in life, in this church, anywhere, if they dog you out verbally, they are evil. I don't care if it's Sister Portis. I don't care if it's me. I don't care if it's Angela. You're evil. And God is taking the evil in you to use it to make somebody else better. Now, if, if God take the evil in me to make you better, you better use it to your wisdom. In other words, you better stop and think, brighter your mouth while this evil person is standing before you. Because all I'm using them for, uh, uh, D.D., all I'm using pastor for is to make you better. Now, pastor in trouble because he's already been evil. So I got him. Now, am I going to get you? Do, do y'all get what I'm saying? If I do something evil, he's saying, John, you're evil. Now, he, get, he giving me a chance, but we ain't talking about me. We're talking about the receiving party. So if he already got me and making me say something, because I can't say stuff out of my heart, that's not there, right? So if it's coming out of my mouth, it's coming out of my heart, which means it's a part of me, and God is using my evil to make you better. Now, let's see how you're going to deal with it. Because it's in you too, Vance. But I need an evil person to bring it out of you. I got John. Let's see if I got you. Let's see if you evil. 
So are you going to cuss me back out? You going to talk about me? Now we got two evils going, don't we? But God said, why don't you be slow to speak? Why don't you say, I don't really care. And everybody said, yeah. come on, let's give the Lord a hand praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Come on. I know. I know somebody wants some prayer. Come on, ministers. I know somebody wants some prayer. We all ought to want prayer. <laughs> Amen. We can control our mouth. Listen, the question that you want to walk, want to worry about walking out of here, what fruit are you eating? What fruit are you eating? What kind of fruit are you eating? Are you eating the fruit of good? Are you eating the fruit of evil? Nobody can answer that but you. Nobody can answer that but you. Nobody can answer that but you. What fruit are you eating? What fruit are you eating? Come on, what need that? Oh. <laughs> what fruit are you eating? Come on, Aaron, Sini. From now on, y'all come up all the time without me calling you. Um, what, yeah, hot tea. What fruit are you eating? What fruit are you eating? What fruit are you eating? I think, I, I, I like this sermon. I think I want a copy of this and I need to hear this without me talking. What fruit are you eating? What fruit are you eating? What fruit? Hallelujah. Because if y'all running around practicing evil, God going to use you. He going to use you to get me right. He going he gonna to use you to get me right. He going to use you to get me right. And I sure want to be right. What fruit are you eating? What fruit are you eating? Thank you, Jesus. What fruit are you eating? What fruit? What fruit? What fruit are you eating? Are you eating the fruit of righteousness or unrighteousness? Are you eating the fruit of holiness or unholy? What fruit are you eating? What fruit? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. What fruit are you eating? You got, we got to learn how to control our mouth. Come on, sing me something. <laughs> I will trust Thank you, Lord. in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. I will trust what fruit are you eating? in the Lord until what fruit you eat? I will trust Thank you, Lord. in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will we got to trust, trust in him, y'all. Trust whatever he say. We got to trust him. Faith. We got to get that faith. That must succeed of faith. We got to get that mustard seed of faith. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I I'm going all the way. 
I'm going to watch guide and pray. I'm going to watch fight and pray until I Until I die, I'm going to stay on my bending yes, knees. Yes, Lord. I'm going to stay on my bending knees. I'm going to stay on my bending knees until I. Stay on my bed and I'm going to stay on my bed knees until I die. I'm going to stay on my bed knees. I'm going to stay on my bed. Until I die. Yes, Lord. I am going to stay on my bending knees. I'm going to stay what on. What fruit are you eating? fruit are you eating? I'm going to treat everybody right. I'm going to treat everybody right. I'm going to treat everybody right until I die. Treat everybody right until I die. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust. In the Lord until I die. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. Until I die. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will trust. Hallelujah. In the Hallelujah. Lord. What fruit are you eating? I will trust. In Hallelujah. The Lord. What fruit are you eating? I will trust. In the Lord. Until I die, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord.
Lord until I die. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. Anybody else want prayer before we close out? Anybody else want prayer before we close out? Amen. What fruit are you eating? What fruit are you eating? What fruit are you eating? You eating the wrong fruit? Amen. Listen, I know I'm, I'm going to meet with the brothers real quick. And I know I said I wanted to meet with all of the people that involved in the auxiliary. Really, I would like to meet with all church members. I really would like to meet with everybody that's sitting in here when I come out back. I'm out back. So I don't want the people that don't have the Holy Ghost or don't feel like you're part of. I just put more weight on the people that are saved. But if y'all want to feel the weight of being a member of this church or wanting to be a member of this church, then I'm going to ask that you stay and listen to me. I'm not fussing. I just need to make some correction before we go any further after today. Everybody understand? So don't nobody think I'm coming back to try to fuss at you or nothing like that. I am a, I am a passionate person about what I what I believe, oh, I'm sorry. I'm a passionate person about what I believe in. I believe in strict, old-fashioned, right, good holiness. That's what I believe in. I, I believe in that. Amen. And I'm passionate about that. So I'm, I'm very strong. I'm very boisterous about that. So don't nobody feel like I'm fussing. I'm, I'm just, I, I want us to, I want, I want to have the best church on God planet. Amen. Amen. And I know the only way to get it, y'all, we got, we, got we got to stay in a corrective mode because that's all the way the Bible is. It's just a corrective mode. And that's all I'm saying. Amen. So I want to meet with the brothers immediately uh, after we close. You can stand. And I would like for everyone in here to stay until I come back. It's only going to take me 15 minutes or less. For me to talk to him. Now I'm sorry you got some plan. If you want to go by all means please. But all of y'all that have got part in it. I don't expect y'all to go nowhere. Amen. But I would love for everyone to stay. So everybody will know what's in my heart and mind. And what's going on. So y'all won't say I didn't know. Because I ain't going to repeat it. Amen. So please do that for me. Alright let us stand. Let us stand. Father God in the precious wonderful name of Jesus. We say thank you, Lord. There's nothing else we could say other than thank you. That we, we don't, you know, we just thank you. Because we know we need correcting. We, you, we, we know that we've been eating the wrong fruit. Now we're going we gonna to put that bad fruit aside. We're going we gonna to put it down. We're going to eat the fruit of righteousness, the fruit of holiness. Father, and we thank you for helping us. We thank you for showing us. We thank you for directing us. We thank you for encouraging us. And we thank you for this church. We thank you for everyone at the sound of my voice. We thank you for every member, every want to be member, every going, every going to be member. Lord, we just thank you for helping us grow and grow right. Steady, steady growth, Lord God. No, no fast growing, just steady growth where we can grow and learn to do what the scripture said. So we give you praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Children, I don't want y'all running around playing.